It's the end of summer, six months after the first restrictions that came into place on our lives, our healthcare, our social interactions, and our economy because of the predictions of COVID. We all remember those predictions back six months ago, where here in Ontario, upwards of 100,000 people were expected to perish and die from this pandemic, where in fact, we have 2,800 deaths in Ontario. But setting aside the evidence of COVID for a moment, setting aside the fatalities, because I, I believe the, the data is clear that COVID is not and never has been as severe as the predictions and the models and the forecasts suggested. But when all those restrictions came in, there was clearly a failure by all governments around the world about consequences. They didn't give time or thought or consideration to what this would mean for us. But now we're starting to see the data is coming in about the hardship and the injury that we've done to our economy with these unreasonable and disproportionate COVID measures. Our, econ our economy has taken a huge, huge hit. And now I know some people might suggest, well, this is, uh, you can't compare health with money. But let me say this, we are blessed here in Ontario and in Canada with having a healthcare system that is top notch, with an education system that is top notch, with infrastructure, roads, bridges, airports that are top notch. We live in a uh, society of the rule of law. We have good courts and access to justice. All those things are paid for and they're a derivative of our economic prosperity. If we don't have prosperity, we will not have a first-rate healthcare system. We will not have a first-rate education system. We will not have a first-rate infrastructure or, or access to justice. Indeed, we'll have the alternative to that. Now let's take a look at and let's measure what we've done to our economy over these past six months. In the second quarter, the numbers are out. Our economy contracted by 39%. 39% less economic activity in the second quarter in Canada. That is greater than depression era contractions. And let's put this into context. What does that, that also mean? Well, we know eight and a half million Canadians are on a government relief program called the CERB, the Canadian Employment Relief Benefit or the COVID Employment Relief Benefit. Eight and a half million people who were working in March are unemployed today. In addition to that eight and a half million, we have over another million that are just unemployed. 10 million Canadians are no longer working, no longer earning a productive wage, no longer providing for their families, but are dependent on a relief program from the federal government. It's more than that. We also know that this year, the federal government has increased its debt borrowings tenfold. Our deficit 
this year alone will be $400 billion. And let's put that in perspective a little bit. During the six years of the Second World War, our government fought for our freedoms, for justice, and expended, spent $100 billion in today's dollars fighting the Second World War. This year, four times that much has been spent fighting a virus by ending our freedoms, by ending our democracy, by ending our access to healthcare and justice. $400 billion. And who's gonna pay for that? We know all governments get all their money from you and me, from people. That's where it comes from. In Ontario, we've also increased our borrowings, not by 10 times like the federal government, but by three times. We now have the largest deficit ever in our history in Ontario. And who's gonna pay for that? Well, you and I. And can we afford to build hospitals and schools when we have to pay back $400 billion in debt this year alone? One thing we can tell you for sure that we all know without a doubt is debts have to be repaid through taxes or through fees or through some other mechanism where we transfer the money in our pocket to government treasury. And we're gonna be transferring a lot of our money to government to pay for COVID. Whatever you're making today, whatever your take home pay today is, it's gonna be a lot less next year, a lot less, right? How much less? I don't know, but it's gonna be significant because we've never gone into debt to this degree ever. And as we've gone into more debt, 10 million fewer people are paying into the pot. They're unemployed. Their level of taxation is significantly diminished. The number of businesses that have been put into bankruptcy or closed up is still unknown. It's still increasing every day and every week. The revenues, the taxation from those businesses are also gone. So we have a lot more debt and a lot fewer people paying for it. And it's not just your take home pay that's gonna be affected. And it's not just gonna be your standard of living reduced for those people who are still working. If you're on a pension, you can be expecting to have a lot less. For homeowners, we saw that the federal government, the housing branch of the federal government, CMHC, has started a study to look at a home equity tax. So if you've got equity in your home, let's say you have a home that's worth $400,000 and you have a $200,000 mortgage, that $200,000 of equity will in all likelihood be subject to another new tax. That's what they're studying. Governments know that they need a lot more money to pay for the actions that they've undertaken on COVID. And you and I, our friends, our family, everybody is gonna be paying for this response to COVID for a long, long time. Longer than my lifetime longer than my kids' lifetime, longer than my grandchildren's lifetime. We know, even if we got our act together today and got our economy rebounded and started today, we are in a deep, deep financial hole, but we're not out of it today. 
our governments are continuing to dig us deeper and deeper into debt. We need to speak up. We need to speak out the consequences of COVID for this generation, the next generation and future generations are going to be significant and they're going to be hurtful. We need to stop digging this hole. We need to stop digging it today. If you agree with me that government policies and restrictions regarding COVID are unreasonable and disproportionate, let's get the message out. Share this video, like it, take some friends, and together, let's tell government that we want a return to freedom and democracy.